Amen. Let's go to Matthew 1, verse 3. Let's read from verse 1. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez, and Zerah by Tamar. Look at verse 3. Just those three words. Judah begot Perez. Can you say this with me? Judah begot Perez. Now this simply means that Judah is the father of Perez. Now, this just seems like a statement, a genealogy, family history. But here is a mystery, or should I say a principle, a secret, a truth that the Holy Spirit unlocks to us that is so critical to us walking and living in victory and blessings. How many of you want to know this truth? Amen. Now go to Genesis 29, verse 35. I'm going to go a little fast. Genesis chapter 29, verse 35. This is the account of Judah's birth. Genesis 29, verse 35. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing. Now that's Rachel from Jacob. Had a son called Judah. The word Judah means praise. Because her heart was filled with praise towards God when he was born. And therefore his name was given as Judah, which means praise. Turn to your neighbor and say, Judah means praise. Now what does Perez mean? Well, turn to Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. We're going to end up praising and shouting God today. All right. Genesis chapter 39. Now this is the time when Perez is about to be given birth to by Tamar. Now it came to pass, look at verse 27 first. It came to pass at that time for giving birth that behold, twins were in her womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that the one put out his hand and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand saying, this one came out first. And also the, so that they could differentiate the elder from the younger. Then it happened as he drew back his hand that his brother came out unexpectedly. So there was somebody coming out first. But the boy that was behind broke through and came out before the elder. And she said, how did you break through? This breach be upon you. Therefore, his name was called Perez. And Perez means breakthrough or a gap in the wall. That you just broke through that barrier or that wall. Turn to your neighbor and say, Perez means breakthrough. So you put these two meanings together, you get the simple statement, praise is the father of breakthrough. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, what I'm sharing is for us all to be doing later on, all right? So get ready to do some praise today. Praise is the father of breakthrough. How many of you want breakthrough in your life? How many of you want to go ahead of your elder brother? <laughs> Amen. How many of you want to speed them up the miracles or the blessings of God in your life? There's a key here. It's called praise. To be the father means to be the reason for the existence. See, you, you cannot be here today if your father was not here. Right? So your father is the reason of your existence. Praise precedes breakthrough. That's what it means. When we say Mahatma Gandhi is the father of the nation, that father of the nation is a title that we give to someone who is the driving force behind the establishment of his country, state, or nation. The driving force. So when we say father, we're talking about the driving force behind whatever is taking place. 
So praise is the driving force. Worship, rejoicing is the driving force behind breakthrough. So this is the key, the principle, the truth that God wants our church to be established in and even for your own personal lives. Now let's look at a brilliant example of this in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. One of my favorite portions of scripture. One that I have practiced time and again in my life and seen so much blessing. Let's look at verse 1. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is in En Gedai. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah, the people of God, there is a huge multitude, armies of three nations coming to destroy that nation. So the immediate reaction of Jehoshaphat and the entire nation of Judah is fear. Fear. Now that's a very natural reaction. Whenever you get good news, you are happy. But when you get bad news, especially terrible news, tragic news, news of lo great loss, or news that the whole colony is coming, going to come to your house and chase you out of your colony. If ever that kind of news comes, how would you feel? Fear. Amen. Now let's just go down to verse 14. So what they do is that the entire nation come to seek the face of the Lord. They're there praying and crying before the presence of the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataneah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. The sons of Asaph, they are worshipers. Worshipers. And he said, listen all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. This, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So God assures them that he's the one who's going to fight on their behalf. Verse 17, go on. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. So the instruction is that God will fight on your behalf. And even for you, in every situation or circumstance that you may be facing with right now, God is the one who wants to fight on your behalf. Amen. And his instruction to you is, do not fear, take your position, your position of faith. Stand still. Do not give in to fear or panic in any way or anxiety. See the salvation of the Lord. The word salvation there is the Hebrew word Yeshua. Can you say Yeshua? Yeshua is also the name of Jesus. How do I see the salvation of the Lord? It's very simple. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. See Jesus as your savior, your healer, your deliverer, your comforter. In every problem you're going through, your key is Jesus. Your answer is Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. So stand still and see your Yeshua. Do not fear. But the Lord says that you must also go out by faith, obeying his instructions. So let's look at verse 21 onwards. So when he had consulted with the people, the king, with the prophets, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. They were 
helping to stab one another. Oh, please stab me here. Oh, you stab me this side. So they were helping to kill one another. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked around the multitude, and there were the dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And there were three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Let's go on. And on the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka. The word Baraka means blessing. So they were in the valley of blessing, for there they blessed the Lord, and therefore the name of the place was called the valley of Baraka until this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat in front of them to go back to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. Verse 30. Then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest all around. Okay. So they sought the Lord. God gave them the word of wisdom through the prophet. Do not fear. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. And you go out. But when you go out, instead of sending the army first, send the musicians. Send the singers and the praises in the front of the army. Now, you will not find that in any military manual in any army of the world. The art of war, the manual of the American army, you will not find that in any manual. Because many times, the, the instructions of God are beyond the reason of man. Many times, the instructions of God are completely opposite to what man would do in that present situation. To human wisdom. But yet, in the obedience is the victory. Whoever thought that you could win a battle by sending the musicians first? But here we see three armies defeated in simple obedience to what the word of wisdom came from the man of God. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 22. When they began to sing and to praise. When they began to sing and to praise. Now it took faith for them. I don't think they were feeling the worship. I don't think they were feeling. You know, sometimes you're on the pulpit and the congregation is worshiping also. So the worship is on stage. So they feel the inspiration, the worship louder. Here, there was no congregation. The congregation was your enemies with spears and swords waiting to kill you right in front of you. So I'm sure the, 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 the musicians, they have some fear and some anxiety, some apprehension. They're walking right up into the battlefield. They could be met with arrows. They could be met with spears. So it took them faith to begin to praise God. To begin to sing to the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. The word praise, it means too loud, L-A-U-D. Make sure you're taking down notes. Make sure when you come to church, you bring your Bible. To praise means too loud, L-A-U-D. That means to, to really lift up somebody. It means to boast. To praise God means to boast in God. It means to declare or proclaim the goodness or the greatness of God. To proclaim. The greatness of God. Amen. There are seven Hebrew words for praise. Because praise is so varied. It's more than just opening your mouth and saying a couple of words that the pastor has said. Say hallelujah. So you say hallelujah. No. There are seven Hebrew words. Let me show you a couple of them. The word yada. Everyone say yada. Yada means to confess with outstretched hands. Outstretched. Not half stretched. Outstretched hands. To confess. It means to revere. It means to, to, you know, give by the shooting out of your hands 
from your heart your thanksgiving and your praise to the Lord. So praise includes the postures of your body. Let's look at another word, Shabbat. Everyone say Shabbat. Everyone say Shabbat. The word Shabbat means to shout. Now in some churches you go here, you're not allowed to shout. Because to shout means something is wrong with you. Satan has come and controlled you. <laughs> the Bible says, shout. Don't just shout because you want to shout. Don't shout because you want to attract attention to yourselves or do you want to disturb the peace. But in the right place, in the right time, you need to shout. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? Amen. It means to address in a loud tone. It means to triumph, to make a shout of victory. Hallelujah. Let's look at another word. Halal. One of my favorite words of praise. Halal. This is where we get the word hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's a Hebrew word, and what it means is to be clear, to praise, to shine, to boast, to rave. To rave. It means to be clamorously foolish. It means to celebrate. It means to celebrate. Hallelujah. Before the Lord. Let's look at another word. Toda. Everyone say toda. Can you say it again? Toda. It means to offer a thanks. To give thanks. To offer the sacrifice of praise in faith for what God is doing. In faith for what God is going to do. It's easy to thank God for what He has done because you have already received the miracle. It takes faith to thank God for what He is going to do even before you see it. Amen. There are other words, Barak. Barak means to kneel down, to prostrate yourself before the Lord. There's another word, Tehila. Tehila means the high praises, songs of the Spirit. And we've been having a lot of tahila in this room in the evening services when people are singing new songs in the spirit, singing in tongues. And if you're caught up in the spirit, that's tahila. Satan hates tahila because he cannot stand it. He has to run away wherever tahila is there. Wherever rock music is there, he loves it. He will come and sit down with you and listen to the rock music together. The rap music. Yeah, it's the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. There's another word, zamar. Zamar means to pluck the strings of the instrument with joy. Pluck the strings of the instrument with joy. That's also part of praise. So the Bible says that when they began to sing and to praise, when they began, that means there was nothing happening. The army was right in front of them. There was fear in the camp. But when they began by faith to praise and to worship the Lord, the Bible says the Lord set ambushes against the armies that were opposing them. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. Now we just read what is there, but now that we understand spiritual principles, I believe this is what was happening. The moment they began to praise God, give Him yada, give Him halal, they would begin to strum on the instruments. They began to sing to the Lord that He is good, His mercy endures forever. The spiritual atmosphere began to change. They could not see it, but that was what was happening. The spiritual atmosphere began to say, change. And the Bible says the Lord set ambushes. In other words, there was something that was released from God. The moment they began to praise God, God released something upon the enemies. Something was released from heaven. 
power, anointing, angels? We don't know. But we know from studying this that the moment they began to praise and they began to worship God, God began to move. Something was released from heaven over these armies. And the Bible says that they began to kill themselves. Praise in faith changes the spiritual atmosphere over your lives, over your families, over even a region. That's why this truth is so powerful. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Something was released. Turn to your neighbor and say, something was released. What was the reaction? Well, there was confusion in the ranks of the enemy. Because here, these armies represent Satan to us today, the people of God. There was confusion. There was panic among them. They began to destroy one another. And the Bible says they were completely destroyed. What I know is this. Satan cannot stand the atmosphere of praise. Demons cannot stand the atmosphere of praise. Evil spirits cannot stand the atmosphere of praise. The moment you begin to praise God, strongholds will come crumbling down. The moment you begin to praise God, demons begin to flee. The moment you begin to praise God, whatever assignment or agent or plans of the enemy against your life begins to be destroyed. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Praising God. I'm not talking about special songs. Now, in the special song, you can be praising God, but I'm talking about really praising God from your heart with faith. So that was the first thing. The enemy began to be destroyed. Secondly, abundance of blessings. What they thought would destroy them, now is lifting them up. Hallelujah. They thought they would be destroyed, but because they obeyed God and they began to praise God, God turned around the situation, and now they have a huge harvest. It took them three days to gather the spoils of the gold and the jewelry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jewelry, the Bible says. How many of you like jewelry? Amen. Don't blame your husband. Look to the Lord and praise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Not only that, the Bible says they stood in the valley of Baraka. And the Lord spoke to my heart as I was preparing this. If the people of God begin to praise me as a lifestyle and they continue to stay in the position of praise every day of their lives, no matter what is going through in their lives, no matter what problem, what difficulty they're facing, they continue to stay in the place of praising and thanksgiving me, that place will turn into a valley of blessing for you. That means you will eat a continual feast of blessings from God. The blessings of God will keep on popping out of your life. Maybe in the beginning like a popcorn, three minutes, nothing is happening. But suddenly one corn, pop, 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 pop. You're getting excited to continue to praise God. And in the end, five minutes, pop, 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 pop. The blessings of God will flow in your life continually. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only that, verse 27 says, with great joy, they went back. Praise releases great joy. Not only that, verse 30 says, The realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest and peace. Can you say rest and peace? Rest and peace. I've discovered this in my life. When I was going through depression, I've shared this many times. Depression. Terrible depression. Panic attack. In the middle of the night, 2 a.m., 3 3 a.m., I would get up. 
I would be sweating. It was almost as if all the forces of hell were let loose upon me. I did not know what to do. I did not even know what I was going through. I did not even know it was a panic attack. Fear. And I learned something a long time back. When you don't know what to do, praise God. When you don't know what is happening, lift up your hands and just keep on praising God till something changes. Not five minutes and ten minutes and then you're waiting to see what is happening. No, till something changes. That means you got to push through sometimes. We give up too easily nowadays, the young people. So that's what I would do. 3 a.m., 2 a.m., I would lift up my hands. I would begin to praise God. I would dance around the room rejoicing by faith. I did not want to do it. I did not feel like doing it. I did it by faith. And I knew that my life depended on it. And I did it till something changed. The fear would break. And rest would come in my heart. And I will go back to sleep. But then the next night it will happen again. And I would get up and I would fight through my praise and my worship till the rest came. And God taught me how to walk in faith, in praise, and subdue Satan under your feet by his peace. Oh, thank you, Lord. Some of you need to do that. Some of you are giving in to your feelings too much. You're giving in to the enemy. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You speak in tongues. You know the word, but you are lazy to do the word of God. That's what the Spirit of God is saying to many of you right now. You're lazy. And God's not saying that in an accusing, condemning way. He's just highlighting your condition. Many of us, even though we know the word, we don't want to do what the word of God says. That rest will come in your life when we begin to make this a lifestyle. Let me share with you some effects of praise. How does praise affect you? Now, the praise is amazing because praise affects you, it affects the devil, and it affects God also. And it affects your life, all right? So let me just give you some quick points. Number one, praise makes God bigger than the problem in your eyes. When you begin to praise God, your problems become smaller and smaller. See, no matter what you're going through, some of you have problems with your family, with your husband, with your children. You're carrying that sadness. And the Lord is saying to you, you need to let that go and begin to praise me. Don't try to rationalize it. Don't try to reason, how, how can I praise God when, when bad things are happening? Well, the Bible says, especially when bad things are happening, you need to praise God. James 1, 2 says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. That means when you are in a trial, count it joy. That means count your joys and rejoice. Rejoice. Especially when the devil is coming against you, rejoice. When your boss is coming against you, rejoice. When your girlfriend has left you, rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. When something wrong is going through in your life, rejoice. That's the Bible. Hallelujah. Number two, praise drives away negativity, complaining and grumbling from our lives. It drives away the negative words. You see, negative words want to keep on jumping onto our mouth. Everywhere you go, people are talking negative, 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 complaining, grumbling, bitter. And if you are not careful, you start speaking like the world. The only way you can inoculate your, your mouth is take a vaccination of praise from time to time. Just keep on praising God. Don't give in to that negativity. Amen. Number three, it drives away fear and anxiety. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer, with supplication and thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It drives away fear and anxiety. It even, in fact, drives away depression. Hallelujah. Loneliness. The next point. It makes one joyful and strong. 
Turn to Psalm 89, verse 15 to 17. Psalm 89, verse 15 to 17. The Bible says, Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. The word joyful sound is the sound of praise. The word blessed means happy. That means when you know the sound of praise and you are releasing it from your life, you will be always joyful. And when you're joyful, you'll be strong because the joy of the Lord is a... The joy of the Lord is a strength. And in the end, in verse 17, it says, Your horn shall be exalted, which means the horn represents your strength. God will exalt your strength when you praise Him. Yes. Hallelujah. The next point. Praise invites the presence of God in our lives. Psalm 22 verse 3. See, there's something about the scriptures that tell me God loves praise. God is attracted to praise. God likes to show up in the room where people are praising. Can you say amen? I mean, when people are complaining and grumbling, it's almost like God wants to leave that room. But when people are praising God, God wants to show up there. It invites God into our circumstances. Psalm 22 verse 3 says, He inhabits the praises of His people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next point. Destroys the powers and presence of spiritual attack. If there is spiritual attack upon your life and you begin to praise God, it's going to destroy that power. I remember in Nepal many years back, Pastor Kohen and I in a room, suddenly both of us woke up at the same time and there was a chilling presence of fear in the room and it was not the Holy Ghost. I looked at him, he looked at me and we're like wondering what's happening. We both lifted up our hands and began to praise God, praise God and praise God for about 10 minutes and suddenly that fear was broken and we went to sleep. It was a spiritual attack. Hallelujah. Confuses the plan of Satan. When you praise God, Satan is confused. They start killing one another. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalms 103 verse 1. Praise blesses God. The next point. It blesses God. You can bless the Lord. When the Bible says bless the Lord, we're saying we're giving him praise and it blesses him. Hallelujah. You see, when we don't see the blessings and yet by faith we praise God, the Bible says, blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. Because when you're walking by faith, faith pleases God. It's impossible to please God without faith. But when you're praising God by faith, you are pleasing God. In other words, when God is pleased, He's willing to do favors for you. Hallelujah. The next point, Acts chapter 15, 25 to 26, Paul and Silas were in prison, but instead of crying and complaining, instead of blaming the pastor who sent them out to the mission field, and instead of, you know, uh, calling down judgment on the people who whipped them on the back, because that's what we would do, right? Lord, judge them. Lord, send sickness to the house of these people who beat us and we are bleeding and we are in prison. No, they began to sing hymns in the middle of the night. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? That means their heart was still filled with love towards the ones who beat them. Hallelujah. They were not in offense. They were not carrying this bitterness. You see, one of the reasons why we cannot praise God, do you know that? Is because your heart is so full of I don't like him. I don't like her. She doesn't like me. Ki babiyaze. Ki babiyaze. You know, a heart is so full of these little, little, little thorns. Little, little stones. Little, little things. It's over sabo ek din. Sabo? Ek din do sabo? You say, come on. That's why we can't. See, Paul and Silas were beaten. They were bleeding. They were imprisoned because they were wanting to bless those people with the gospel. And even in the midst of the, in the, in the prison, 12 o'clock at night, they were praising and singing God. The love of God was flowing out of their heart towards God. They had forgiven their captors. They had forgiven the ones who had beaten them. And they were praising God. And God loves a good concert. 
He showed up in the prison, but the prison was too small to hold him. So there was an earthquake. Hallelujah. It opens the way for God's power to be released. The next point, Psalm 67, verse 3 to 7. Psalm 67, verse 3 to 7. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Do you know that when we praise God, we invite God to bring his governance in Nagaland? His justice will come. Something will be released. And God's will comes to the earth. Verse 5, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. It says when you praise God, the earth shall yield her increase. When you praise God, harvest comes in your life. Blessings show up in your life. You have sown seeds, many of you, in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, don't be worried about that. Don't be concerned about where the harvest is coming from. Just keep on thanking God for the seed you have sown. Keep on thanking God that God is faithful. The seed you have sown, the harvest is coming. Can you say amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. When you praise God, the next point, Isaiah 12 verse 3. A merry heart has a continual feast. A continual feast, which is very similar to the Valley of Baraka. When you begin to praise God and you make that your lifestyle, every day you're praising God. In the morning, you get up, you praise God. In the daytime, you have a fight with some traffic policeman, you praise God. Hallelujah. You are stuck in the traffic jam, you keep on praising God there. Hallelujah. Somebody stole your chicken, you praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep on praising God the whole day. In everything, the Bible says, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. When we begin this lifestyle of praising God, what happens is that your heart begins to be merry. Not M-A-R-R-Y. M-E-R-R-Y. <laughs> merry, joyful all the time. You're full with joy. Your insides are flowing with joy. When your insides are flowing with joy, the Bible says you have a continual feast. That means your God is continually giving you more and more and more. He's opening your mouth and force feeding you the favor of God, the blessing of God, the strength of God, the healing of God. You are having a continual feast. In other words, you are standing in the valley of Baraka. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says when you have a merry heart, your body is strong. Your bones are strong. Do you know that when you have joy, your, 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 your blood, the marrow, your bones, it produces more, more, more blood? It's true. You study the scriptures in Proverbs. Joy affects you to the marrows of your bones. Part of the reason why people are so sickly and so tired all the time is because most of the time we are angry and we're bitter and we're mad and we're sad. It's true. Joyful people are healthier people. Amen. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 to 18. Let's read that. The Bible says, rejoice always. This is Paul. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, he said, rejoice always. And again, I say, rejoice. And now again, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, see, well, one thing I'll let you know, never be afraid of the devil. Never, 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 never. Not at all. He's the one who's afraid of you. But we don't know it, so he tries to scare us with lies and deception. Never, never be afraid of the devil. But when the attack comes, sometimes when the fear comes, because the feeling of fear is real, the oppression is real, what you do is you begin to praise God and worship him, and the Lord will fight on your behalf like the Lord defeated the armies of Ammon and Mount Seir and Moab. 
Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Rejoice always. Verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Verse 18. In everything give thanks. This is the sandwich rule. Sandwich rule. Start with praise and with praise. Don't start with complaining, ending with complaining. Amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Do you know that in the courts of kings in the past, if you have a sad face and you make the king sad, they will take your head off? It's true. You are not allowed to have a sad countenance in the presence of the king. You're not allowed to. Many times when we pray, we want to put on some sadness to impress Jesus. You know, to make Jesus, You know, we want to cry because we think crying is spiritual. Not all the time. In fact, in the book of Ezra, when they were crying, they were stopped. Nehemiah said, no, stop crying. Today is a holy day. H-O-L-Y. Holy day. Don't cry. Rejoice. So rejoicing is holy. Crying is not holy. How we have reversed it. So we are more holy because we cry all the time. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. There's a time when you will weep, yes, but it is not all the time. And if it is all the time, something is wrong. I know some group of people, every time they pray, they force themselves to cry, to impress God. Even if there's no tears, they will cry as if they're crying. And sometimes if you do that, your emotions can be stirred up and you start crying. But it's fleshly prayer. It's carnal prayer. It's not from the Spirit of God. Amen. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hallelujah. Praise and thanksgiving is the barometer of our faith. It reveals whether you are faith or you're walking in faith. Praise and thanksgiving. If someone were to faint right now, the doctors in the room will immediately go and check his pulse. Right, doctors? You will check the pulse. Why? Because the pulse is an indication of the health. Praise and thanksgiving is the pulse of your faith. Yeah. It's the pulse of your spiritual health. So if you are always moody, always weighed down, always complaining, never giving thanks, always grumbling about something or somebody, it means simply we are not being healthy spiritually. We're not healthy. When we walk in thanks and praise, no matter what's going on, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God, it means you are healthy. You're strong. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says, rejoice always. And again I say, Rejoice. Do it even when you don't feel like doing it. Now, a lot of us will agree that praise is good, right? But very few will feel any responsibility to praise God, especially when they don't feel like it. People want to be strong. People want to be joyful. But they think they have no control over what happens. We think we have no control over our life. So we have no control over our feelings. So we often think that praise and rejoicing is only a reaction to good happenings. When something good is going on in our life, we have a right to rejoice. But my, my, my husband is drinking, my children are running around crazy, uh, my father is an alcoholic. How can I praise God, Pastor? What will people say? That big stronghold in Nagaland, what will people say? Manuhan ki babi wo. Ami church di jaga na halal kuri, na press kuri le, mo laga mota do mudukai zay. Manuhan ki babi wo. Have you heard that? That's from the devil. 
You thought that you were being very holy. Uh, no, I, I'm humble when you say that. No, that is from the devil. That's a lie from the devil. Because the word of God and the faith of God is opposite to how people think. Amen. We think we have a right to rejoice only during Christmas, joyous occasions, jubilee. But hey, other times, hey, I'm here. Hey, all of spirits will go. <laughs> Amen. The truly serious Christian is a Christian who's always joyful. <laughs> because he's serious with God and his word. He doesn't let tradition and religion come and affect him. Is a husband drinking? You need to praise more. Children running around, rejoice every day and thank God for the lives of your children. Don't look at what is happening. Look at what you want to see and praise God for that. Hallelujah. 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 Scriptural wisdom says in the middle of darkness, you need to praise God and shout and rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you broke? You need to be happy. <laughs> Not that you are broke, but you need to rejoice in God. He is Jesus, your provider. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. You see, many people will think right now, I don't have a right, I don't have a right, I don't have a right to be happy. Terrible things are happening in my life. I don't have a right to be happy. I'm not a good enough Christian. I'm not worthy. You see, that is the lie of the devil that you are listening to. Do I have a right to be happy? No. Do I have a right to preach? No. It's God's grace. Hallelujah. Do I have a right to rejoice? I don't. Jesus gives me the right to rejoice because he defeated sin and Satan on the cross. Jesus gives me the right to preach. Jesus is the one who has made it worthy for all of us to come into it by grace, by trusting in his finished work. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Are you struggling in some sin? Lift up your hands and thank God for the forgiveness of your sins. Rejoice that Jesus has taken it on the cross. And then you will see that addiction break off from your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise is a choice. You have to choose. It's not a feeling. Andrew Womack says this. I truly believe that my choice to praise God, even after getting the report that my son was dead, was one of the biggest factors in seeing him raised from the dead after nearly five hours. I did not know what the outcome would be, but immediately when I heard the news, I started praising God with all my heart. The moment he got news, his son is dead, he started praising God. Eh, hey, Pagalamanu. Right? We would think like that. Right? The moment he heard the news, his son was dead. He began to praise God. You guys didn't get it. The moment he heard the news, his son was dead. He began to? He began to? He began to? He began to? Praise! Why? You got to fight that fear. You got to fight that attack of the enemy. And you don't deal with it by crying. He began to praise God. And I began to tell him. And I began to tell the devil that no matter what happens, I would not stop serving him. Hallelujah. And it was at that moment that faith abounded in my heart. And I knew that he would be raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And that's why Nagaland needs a church that is happy all the time. In this situation. So people don't understand. I mean, last night, we're going to say, every day, kill a man, kushi pahe is to For them, we are rejoicing. For Nagaland, we are praising. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. By the way, 59,000 rupees from our church has gone to Kifuri. That money that we collected, was sent to Kifiri. 
I just want you to know that. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. When I was in Bible school, every day, not every day, some days after the classes, 12 noon class will be over, 1 p.m. prayer school starts. So from 12 to 1, I would go to the church auditorium to pray. And many times, you know what I would do? I would just run around the auditorium praising God and thanking Him for my future. Some of you young people need to do that. Because according to the government, you have no future. There's no employment for you. All your jobs and all the business will be taken over by the other communities. There's no government job. It's true. There's going to be over one lakh unemployed youths in a couple of years' time. So what do you do? Blame the government? Blame life? Become a victim? A victim? A victim reacts to circumstances. Ayah, can't be nice. Government, eh, this government. You have become a victim. Or you become a victor. How? You look into the word of God. And that's why I, I saw the word of God. God is thinking thoughts for me, thoughts of goodness and not of evil to give me a future and a hope. My future is good because God called me. Hallelujah. And I would run around the, the auditorium praising God, thinking, my future is good. My future is good. Yeah. Did I know anything about my future? No. Did I know we would have this church at that time? No. Did I know that we would have this kind of ministry? No, I knew nothing, but I knew the word. And I took authority over my own feelings and my choices, and I gave a sacrifice of praise. I ran around the church hall thanking God for my future, thanking God for my future, praising God, rejoicing over my future glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to the nations, praise God. And I've kept on doing that. Even now I do it. When I tell you to praise God for your future, many of you, you cannot. Key future. <laughs> right? This negative, cynical attitude we have in Nagaland. Key kwaze. Eh, charibi. Key babi Don't ever give in to that attitude. That attitude will destroy your life, young people. That attitude will destroy your life. Hallelujah. God has called you. Yes or no? Yes. God has saved you. Yes or no? Yes. God has anointed you. Yes or no? Yes. God has forgiven you. Yes or no? Yes. So that he will just drop you again. I called you, but now I'm not, I'm not going to bless you. Just to play a trick on you. No, He called you. He blessed you. He, he has anointed you and He has forgiven you. Why? Because He has a purpose for you. I don't know the purpose, Pastor. I don't know. I myself, you don't know it. But you know it is there. You know the Word of God says He is faithful. Amen. So what do you do? You become a victor. In other words, you begin to triumph over your feelings, over your circumstance, and rejoice by faith for what He's going to do 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. In the future, rejoice. When you rejoice, you will attract His hand upon your life. When you begin to rejoice, you will begin to see faith open doors for you. When you begin to rejoice, God will release something. God will release something. God will release something over your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Get excited about your future. Don't listen to the newspaper. Don't listen to the government. Listen to God. What is God saying about your future? <laughs> what is God saying about your future? What is God saying about your future? He's not saying, I am more like you. He's not saying that. What is God saying about your future? God has a plan for every one of you. All you children up there, God has a plan for your life. 
Amen. God has a plan for you. Never, never, never give in. Live as a victor. Live in triumph. Rejoice in the midst of your problems. Laugh at your problems. Count it all joy every day. How can I do this every day, pastor? It's very simple. The instruction from the prophet. Stand still. Re that means chill. Relax. Don't react to everything that's happening around you. Don't react to bad news. Chill. See the salvation of the Lord. See Yeshua. See Jesus every day. See Jesus in your life. See Jesus in your future. See Jesus in your body. See Jesus in your relationship. See Jesus. Can you say Jesus? Jesus. Hallelujah. See the salvation of the Lord. The word salvation there is the Hebrew word Yeshua, which is the name of Jesus. Your salvation is Jesus. Amen. Amen. More and more, I want to wean people from my church from, you know, things that pull us away from putting faith in Jesus. Gifts of the Spirit sometimes can take us away from Jesus. Prayer houses can sometimes take away our heart from Jesus. Signs, wonders, spectacular things, spectacular stories. Oh, Jesus is enough. Come on, let's say it. Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. Put your faith in Him completely for your healing, your deliverance, your blessing, your future. We will believe in Jesus, but we'll also put lucky charm. <laughs> we'll believe in Jesus, but it's a pator though, beeping him in the balance. So you buy the pator, especially rich people, expensive tone. <laughs> Jesus is enough. Amen. We worship in spirit and truth. In spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. See the salvation of the Lord. And when you see him, you see his cross. You see his work. That is the good news. And when you see the good news, you respond to the good news. How do you respond to good news? By rejoicing, I'm forgiven. Rejoicing, I'm blessed. Rejoicing, I'm on my way to heaven. Rejoicing, Jesus had made me righteous. Jesus has called me. See, that is good news. You react to the good news, not from the world, but from the cross. There's a message from the cross and there's a message from the world. The message of the world is temporal, but the message from the cross is eternal. Yes. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus has bought for us eternal redemption. That means, eternal means the effect of the cross 2,000 years ago is still fresh today. As if Jesus died right now. That's what it means. Eternal. You got to get this. Many times we're not excited about the cross because it's like, oh, do has a sal pastor that pisid na? 2,000 years. Maan purana. We want something new. Right? So we run to the stone. Eternal redemption. You know what it means? It means the effect of the blood. The effect of his death. The effect of his redemption is fresh. Even today, as if Jesus died for me right now. Fresh. So if you will believe in the righteousness of God, if you will believe in the redemption of God, if you believe in the sacrifice of God on the cross for us, the effect of that begins to work in our lives. How do I get it to work in my life? You begin to praise Him. You begin to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the cross. Rejoice in redemption. You respond to the good news of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Come, let's stand to our feet.